What is up guys, Gary here back with another video. Today we're going to be talking about the Nikon Z6 II. I've had this camera for about a year now and I have done about 110 weddings on this camera as you can tell by the shutter count. I'm going to be telling you today whether uh, this camera has held up to its expectations, how good of a camera it has been and how you know it's held up on me and whether I would recommend it to you. So I'm gonna go through the pros and cons and in conclusion, if I would buy this camera again, if I had to. So I'm a photographer uh, based out of New York. I've done weddings all the way from Chicago, Baltimore, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and you name it, I've been there. So the first thing I wanna touch on about this camera is that the focus has improved so much. I, I can't even, I don't even know how to explain it to you. Uh, from going from the Nikon D750 to the D780 to this camera, the, the change has just been phenomenal. The first thing I've noticed is that this camera is not only good at focusing with native lenses, this camera is actually fantastic at focusing with adapted lenses. And I thought initially when I switched over to the mirrorless system, I thought I'd have a little bit of an issue with that, but no way. It's actually funny because my adapted lenses produce better results on the Z, the, the Z system opposed to the other, uh, the F mount. I literally just point it and I snap it. And even my adaptive lenses, my $200 1.850 millimeter lens just comes out tack sharp and it's just fantastic. And I love it. And I can't explain to you how, how nice it feels, uh, knowing that the camera gets, gets the shot right away. So another thing I really like about this camera, which, um, previously we didn't have in the Nikon, uh, system is that, uh, touch shutter is really snappy. Like for example, when uh, people that had the Nikon D750, they know what it's like that when you turn into live view and you, and you try to focus on something, it would literally take about two seconds for it to nail the focus and then take the shot. And then that improved with the uh, D850, which I didn't end up getting because at the X speed processor, by the time I was in the market, I actually ended up getting the D780. So the D780 really, really had it down almost to a science where you would press on a subject and it would take the picture almost immediately but with the z62 it is it is literally as fast as a dslr you press it it snaps it it just just like that it's honestly a game changer when you have a moving subject or when you have a client that doesn't necessarily like photos and you know you need to point and shoot and snap it that second so the touch shutter has been phenomenal another thing i want to talk about is the build quality this this camera um, is built from a solid piece of metal. You can tell it's they haven't cheaped out. Um, there are going to be a couple of things that I'm going to mention that that weren't so great about the build quality, but just the dials, the buttons, the camera itself, the feel, the shutter. When you press the shutter, it's so snappy. You can tell there um, were premium materials put into this camera. So so that's that's a huge win. Now we're going to go into a couple of the cons of the camera. And um, these things, you know what, uh, you know, on, not, there's, there's no such thing as a perfect camera. Obviously, some cameras are going to have cons. Um, one of the cons uh, of the Z62 is the gaskets, just all the ports. Um, the gasket that covers it over time gets warped. And usually people don't notice this because they don't use the camera as much as I do. A lot of times I realized in Nikon cameras uh, where the quality control fails is with the, um, the, um, the grips like the plastic grips will come off, um, the gaskets will, will start to warp. And so my gaskets no longer close fully, uh, which is a problem because when it rains and I need to take night photos, that actually really does hurt me because, you know, I obviously don't want my camera to be destroyed because there are times where I use this camera for video and I want to be able to use that mic port or HDMI port or whatever I need, you know. Another con I would say is sometimes when you take a lot of photos, turn off the camera and then realize that you need to take another photo and turn it back right, uh, turn it back on right away rather. Um, it takes about two seconds to turn on. Sometimes in general, when you turn on the camera, it takes about two seconds to boot up, which sometimes can be a problem. Not for everybody, obviously for a wedding photographer, when you see somebody hugging or you see like mom giving the son a kiss, you want to snap that. And when it takes two seconds, it, it kind of sucks. You don't usually get the moment that way. Um, so I, most of the time I find myself leaving the camera on another problem would be the battery life. 
the battery life obviously it's a mirrorless system it's new i'm just not used to it my d780 would take about a thousand five hundred six hundred pictures until i had to change the battery so i could almost do a whole wedding on one battery the nikon z62 i actually have it right here Ugh. nikon z62 i had to buy this velo grip so this velo grip is a generic grip for the nikon z62 um because i'm running and gunning all day i don't really have time to switch off batteries my assistant for the most part goes to get me batteries so from one wedding I would say I go through four uh, four batteries. It would be two batteries on one grip, and then towards you know the middle of the wedding, I would switch in for another two. Worst comes to worst, if I have an after shoot, I'd pop in one more. So on site, I always have six batteries, and uh, that goes on to the next point of the camera itself doesn't take generic batteries. But a little hack that I realize you can do is that if you buy the the generic Velo grip, you can actually put third party batteries and the camera will accept it, which is amazing. That was a huge lifesaver because I invested into, you know, two, two, um, two generic batteries. And I was like, oh man, I have to throw these out now. And then when I bought the grip, I tried to re-enter these batteries and all has, they worked, which is great because someone had told me that it's a big problem if you put generic batteries into your camera because you could ruin the camera. But theoretically, if you do it through a grip, it'll ruin your grip, but it won't really ruin your camera. So that's a really cool thing. So the last con I would say, um, I know there are a lot of cons, but I'm just, I'm telling you, it's a fantastic camera. Don't don't take the cons as a means to like this camera is not good. This camera does everything it needs to do, and it's top grade. And if it wasn't top grade, I would switch it. And this this camera is wonderful. But the last thing I realized that this this camera has a fault in is uh, this camera came with an update later on as you guys know like in february time that you can shoot 4k 60 on it so 4k 60 doesn't actually work for me i'm shooting on a, do i have a card here no i'm shooting on a pro grade 128 gig uh cf express type b card um so that doesn't really work for me i don't know why it records for like three four seconds and it then doesn't record anymore i've tried it on two different cards i've even tried formatting it if you guys have a solution for me please let me know because i really would love to enjoy you know recording my family vacations and everything in 4k 60 and that would be a really big plus to me so in conclusion would i buy this camera again so i will say it like this and i want to be really honest and transparent if i had to buy this camera tomorrow because this one died and I had to buy another camera, I'd buy this camera. I would. The Z62 is hands down the best. But I'll be honest, if I could hold off and get something with an XP7 processor like the Z9, and ooh, if you guys have seen the specs on the Z9, that thing is yummy. That is a nice camera. I would love to get one, but it looks like it's back ordered to like forget about it. So if I had to buy another camera tomorrow, I would for sure buy this camera. Otherwise, I would like to wait for a camera that has an XP7 processor, maybe something more consumer friendly level, something in the $2,500, $3,000 range for sure. Splurge on that. No question. So that's my thoughts on the Nikon Z62. You know, I, I figured not a lot of people um, have used the, a camera that much this year. So I wanted to give you guys feedback. So in case you guys were in the market to buy this camera, if you ha guys have any other questions, feel free to drop it in the comments. I would love to answer your comments. Maybe with another video. Um, please hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed this video. So, you know, feel free to come back and enjoy new content. I buy gear periodically i just never post it i don't know i have like this buying gear problem i don't call it, i don't i wouldn't call it a problem i enjoy i let I, you know i like what i do i keep buying gear and it's all good this is gary i'm signing out have a wonderful day